zero volts specifically because it is taken as a reference so this that you, the picture that you see on the left is a standard hydrogen electrode this 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 diagram uh, so you can see that there is a supply of hydrogen gas there is a platinum electrode and there, this is 1.00 mole per dm cube which means uh, one molar concentration of hydrogen ions this solution which is the electrolyte is one molar solution of hydrogen ions so actually what is happening is that when we pump in hydrogen gas uh, what happens is that an equilibrium exists between the H plus ions of the electrolyte and the hydrogen gas in the entering the in entering the bell jar so whenever uh, so that an equilibrium exists the pressure is 1 atm and the temperature is 298 kelvin and that's why this is called standard so uh, so th this equilibrium so this re reversible reaction exists the hydrogen ions keep forming h2 gas on the platinum electrode and the h2 ions keep uh, accepting electrons to form keep sorry not accepting electrons they keep losing electrons to form h plus ions so there is an equilibrium between the two so this is taken as a reference because the interchange between h plus and h2 is so fast that uh, there is so it is that is it is given a value of zero the e naught is given a value of zero so that's why uh, the standard hydrogen electrode is taken as the other half cell now let's look at the diagram on the right the, the diagram on the right has instead of a hydrogen electrode it has a copper electrode and it has a zinc electrode so it has a copper electrode and a zinc electrode now you can see that there is cu2 plus ions in the copper uh, in in this copper electrode like the copper rod the copper electrode is dipping into a uh, in, into a solution of cu2 plus ions and similarly the zinc electrode is dipping into a solution of zn2 plus ions now this is what uh, where how we use electrode potentials so again there is an equilibrium between copper metal and i'm sorry b2 electrons there is an equilibrium between copper metal and the copper solution and the cu2 plus ions so we will write this as So this is because the copper, the Cu atoms in this electrode, because obviously this this electrode has Cu atoms, uh, it will keep it will keep losing electrons and forming Cu2 plus ions, which will keep going into solution. And at the same time, Cu2 plus ions will keep accepting electrons that were lost with by the copper, and uh, co and and they will keep forming copper. So this is an equilibrium that exists between Cu2 plus ions and Cu. Now in the case of zinc, something similar is happening. So instead of copper, now we have zinc and Zn2+. So again, atoms from the zinc electrode, they keep losing electrons to form Zn2 plus ions. And these electrons are accepted by the Zn2 plus ions. So they keep forming zinc. So these are two reversible reactions, two equilibria that exist in this, in this overall circuit. Now, uh, before we get into the mathematics, the electrode potentials, Let's see what else we have over here. We have a high resistance voltmeter, obviously, because we are measuring electrode potentials in voltage, uh, in volts, and we have a salt bridge. Now, the purpose of the salt bridge is to complete the circuit, because if you see, electrons can flow through this wire, through the voltmeter, but ions, uh, but we need the flow of ions between these two solutions. And for the flow of ions to happen, we will need, need a salt bridge. So this salt bridge is, is made of potassium nitrate. You don't need to know the composition, but it is made of a gel of potassium nitrate. So this allows ion flow. The salt bridge allows ion flow between the two electrolytes. So this is what uh, an electrolytic cell, a, stand, a standard cell looks like. And because of the electrode potential difference of these two electrodes, we get a value on the voltmeter. Now let's get into the mathematics, the electrode potentials.